Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to The Pegasus Expedition. This is a new grand strategy game set in a sci-fi universe, and it's unique because this is intended to be a story-driven experience. The quick and dirty of it is, Earth is under attack from an alien race, and in desperation, we're launching expeditions into the Pegasus Galaxy, searching for a refuge for Earth's population. However, this galaxy is very much already populated by advanced species, so we're going to have to make difficult strategic and moral choices using either warfare or diplomacy to ensure our species' survival, when oftentimes, the end has to justify the means. Does that get your attention? Awesome. The game is developed by Kala Gameworks, and it is published by Fulcrum, who are the sponsors for today's video. Of course, a big thank you for that. If, as you are watching this video, you think it looks pretty cool and you want to check it out for yourself, there will be a link in the description down below. And I should also note, to celebrate the game's full release as of June 20th, it will temporarily be 15% off on the Steam store. So, if you act quickly, you can get the game for a little bit cheaper. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start up a new game and I will show you how this is going to work. Now, as I said, because this is story-driven, you pretty much want to play with the campaign. This has the primary story, though there are some other scenarios as well that you can play with. And also, I think this might be an extra campaign that gets unlocked as you progress with the main story. I could be wrong on that one, but I think that might be true. Anyway, we'll play with the main campaign on a normal difficulty. The other thing you have to worry about here is fleet combat mode. You can either have all fleets engage and fight at the same time or attack each other one at a time. I'm going to go for all of them at the same time. I think that's going to make for more spectacular battles. All right, let's go ahead and start the game. Everything comes down to this moment. It is not too much of an exaggeration to suggest that the fate of humanity rests in our hands. And just like that, we have been propelled into the Pegasus Galaxy. If you look over here, you can see that there is a portal to Seoul. That's where we arrived. We've already pushed forward into the Zaire Red Giant Star System, and we are going to be moving our fleets through into the Zolka System along this kind of like a hyperlane over here. So I can click on this fleet and simply right-click in order to move it. You see right here, by the way, there are two green arrows. That represents how many moves you can do. You can move between two nodes with this fleet as things currently stand. So this would take one movement. Now, upon arrival, we are going to be greeted by our advisors. These are the primary characters we will be interacting with throughout the story, and their interactions is what's going to help propel the story along. This is not something that is skippable. You do have to go through this story in the main campaign, though there are some side quests that you'll be able to skip later if you so desire. Though, honestly, if you're going into this game and skipping the main story to get into the gameplay, I think you're kind of missing the point. You really should try to immerse yourself at least the first time around, because some of these decisions are going to change the course of your campaign. Now, even though I'm saying all that, I'm not going to read through all of the text in this because I do need to move this video forward, so I'll give you a quick synopsis. Right now, we're talking about how we just launched ourselves into a new galaxy with very limited intel. We really don't know what to expect, but we do need to start looking for more star systems, set up some infrastructure, gather resources, etc. And then we're interrupted by a crew member who's saying, um, guys, we kind of just made contact. Yep, only nine hours into the Pegasus Galaxy, and we run into a hostile alien race who has started shooting at us. We are already at war, folks. So this is your first introduction into combat, and there's kind of a lot to look at here, so bear with me. The first thing to note is that we have one fleet with a bunch of different ships, and the enemy has a fleet which is broken up into several different groups as well. Combat is an automated system, but you do need to determine your strategy and tactics up front. So if we take a look up over here, we can see our battle formations. We can group up our ships into, let's say, three battle groups which are attacking from the same direction in a tight formation, or six battle groups in an encircling formation etc. And we can see over here in the left is this is going to change how our fleets are going to be distributed. And you can also see from these numbers here which task groups are going to be approaching which planetary bodies within this star system. This is really important though because what you can do is, for example, let's say we had uh, two battle groups attacking from opposite directions. We could be hitting this system and this system really hard with a lot of ships, right? But what's going to end up happening is the enemy is going to have two uncontested systems. And if they have any long-range artillery ships, they can get some free pot shots off at us and do a lot of extra damage. So as a general rule, you probably want to try to engage all of the enemies at once to prevent them from getting an uncontested advantage. However, sometimes you do need to have a spearhead maneuver where you group up all your fleets and just try to break through the line and crush their spear to force them to retreat. I'm going to go for four battle groups in an encircling formation kind of like this. And you can move this group around in order to try to control which fleets are going to arrive at what systems. 
Now that we've determined our approach strategy, we have to choose our battle plan, and there are three different tiers we can choose from. The first tier is the weakest, and it is free. We can have, let's say, a cautious advance where we move slower and do less damage, or we can take more damage. However, if we're willing to spend a bunch of resources, in this case, minerals, which you can see up here in the top left, we would be able to give ourselves some combat advantages, doing more damage, right? Or spend a lot of resources and move extremely quickly, right? All this can be quite good. It depends a lot on how strong your economy is. If you're producing a ton of resources, you might be able to take on a much stronger enemy with some of these boosts. It can be very significant. In this case, though, I don't have a lot of resources I'm willing to spare, so I'm going to go for a cautious advance. And then you have to choose how you want to attack. What is your morality approaching into this fight? Because as I said earlier, this game does present a lot of moral choices, and sometimes the end has to justify the means. If you want to be ruthless, go for it. We could use nuclear strikes and do an absolute ton of damage, but there are consequences the more ruthless and aggressive we are, because the Pegasus Galaxy is filled with alien races. We'll meet more of them later. And the more ruthless we are, the worse of a reputation we will start to get, and the Galaxy might start uniting against us. So alternatively, you can try to minimize the casualties. The result being you'll do less damage, but the galaxy as a whole will look a bit more favorable upon you. So you kind of have to choose. How badly do you need to win this fight, and are you willing to accept the consequences? That said though, I think our tactics are solid. Let's go ahead and start the combat. And you can see our fleets are beginning their approach. We can launch a few missile salvos at the enemy, and that's not a bad idea if it looks like we are possibly going to lose a fight, or we want to restrict how many casualties we take and just do as much damage as possible. Your uh, missile strikes do need to be replenished after combat, and it can cost you a bunch of resources, so you do have to be careful not to go too ham on those, but for now, I just want to win as resoundingly as possible and prevent a lot of casualties. Okay, we actually were able to burn down the enemy's morale. They are going to flee. Okay, so... We're already at war. How do we feel about that? The answer is not especially good, but if we're gonna be surrounded by hostile aliens, I mean, that doesn't really change the mission, does it? We still need to conquer some systems and save humanity. So here we are in the game. We have taken the Zaka system. This is gonna be our major central node that leads to a lot of different systems, and we are surrounded by the Roar clan on all sides. At this point, though, there's not much more we can do. Our fleet has no movement left, so we are going to simply end a turn, which is going to process through all the other races available. Some of the other expeditions from Earth are coming through. You can see they actually did just conquer a couple of the systems from the Roar Clan over here. And thus begins Chapter 1, The Shiny New Horizon. But our own expedition isn't done yet. The rest of our fleet is coming through and immediately launching into several scripted attacks. So we are attacking the Corin system over here with two large fleets. At this point, you can see the combat strength on both respective sides. At this point, I look like I'm going to win pretty well. So let's go ahead and launch into a fight here. So how do we want to engage these guys? Great question. They've got some defensive platforms around some of these worlds, and we do want to interrupt those if possible. Um, but we also need to engage them as much as possible. We could go for several battle groups like this, and this would allow me to kind of attack everybody all at once, but eh, feels a little bit risky. I, I, I do kind of need to fight with some overwhelming strength. Let's try for this. And again, I'm going to do a cautious advance with a, a neutral morality. I'm not going to mess with anything yet. Might need to use some missile strikes, though, in order to make sure that we win some of these fights more resoundingly. So let's go ahead and launch a few missiles over here, for example. We are taking away at least a couple of their systems. Their defenses are going down. You can see that the fleets are moving in. All right, let's go ahead and launch missiles over here, where we seem to be struggling the most. The more you can reduce the damage taken, the better, because it does take a while to actually repair your fleets. So you really want to win as resoundingly as possible. Looks like we did win that one pretty well. Okay, now we are sending a fleet over here into the Morum system. Okay, they have absolutely nothing to defend over here. This is going to be extremely easy. Yeah, no, they stood no chance whatsoever, so they retreat. And then we're launching another fleet over here into the Babib system. Now, this one's not looking so good. Mm, okay, well, we can try to attack, but the thing is, you might think you want to flee here. Fleeing is actually really penalizing. You take a lot of damage whenever you run away from a fight. So the question is, is it going to be better to take our shot at this? Do we want to try to win? Or are we willing to say, you know what, I'd rather take a little bit of damage and get the heck out of dodge? I think we're going to try to fight, but this might be a case where I actually need to use some extra plans to give me a slight chance. Might even need to go for by any means necessary, which is a little bit dangerous, but I think it might be worth it. I'm going to go for two battle groups, and uh, maybe not. We're going to go for three battle groups, 
and we're going to try to hit them as hard as we can in one spot, right? Try to break through their lines and burn down their morale as rapidly as we can. So we begin the combat, all of our fleets are arriving, and I'm going to launch a nuke over here at this other force and hopefully do a lot of damage to them. Let's see if that actually does us any good. So, boom! Oh, that just took out a lot of their ships. All right, yeah, that was that was pretty solid. Um, I think we can actually just zoom forward and we'll probably burn through their morale faster than they were able to burn through ours, so we should actually be able to win this fight. So we just took a situation that was looking pretty bad for us, but we're gonna win because I was willing to be as ruthless as I needed to be. Now, speaking to my advisors, they're saying, hey, we've got some star systems, we need to set up some outposts and get resources as quickly as we can. So in a star system like the Zonka star system here, we can see that there are several different planets, some of which are hazardous and without more technology, we'll be able to do nothing with them. But on some of them, we can build some outposts. So if we take a look at, let's say, Zonka 2, this is a barren world with absolutely nothing on it. Over here at Zaka 1b, there are rare earth veins, which could give us extra resources. That's not so bad. And this place is rare earth rich. Also good. In this case, a volcanic rare earth vein world is going to be fantastic for resource generation. So let's set up an industrial outpost. You can see here it's going to take us three turns to build this. There's the cost associated with it. We'll generate 75 minerals per turn, 9.6 rare earth metals per turn, and we're going to start building up some population, six per turn over here. Population is necessary to crew your starships and to get up more outposts. We also have to worry about something here called energy. Now, in this case, any option is going to start generating some power with a power plant. So we got nothing to worry about here. On certain worlds, though, with really hostile environments, we're going to see that it drains our energy. And if we go into the negative, it starts making our people very unhappy, and that's not a good thing. So we'll keep an eye on that for later. For now, we'll get ourselves an industrial outpost over there. We'll get ourselves a research outpost over here. And we'll set up a shipyard outpost over here. All right, now I've got one of all three different options. Shipyards allowing us to construct new fleets, and the research outpost giving us, well, research per turn. Exactly what you would expect. Now, on top of all of this, I do think it would be wise to move some other fleets forward. We've got some decent ones over here. So I'm going to move, let's say, you forward up over to this direction, you up over this direction, and you up over this direction. Basically, I want to protect my damaged fleets, because the enemy could do a counterattack on their turn, and if we are already in a weakened state, we might find that we lose a lot of ships. And that would be no fun for any of us. Now, you can repair a fleet, and this is a very important aspect of the game. Because right now, this fleet right here, you can see, is extremely damaged, right? Their health is not looking so good. So I want to repair these ships to get them at full strength so we can continue our assault. But it's going to cost us a fair bit of minerals, rare earth materials, some population, and two turns to get this repaired. And when it is being repaired, we are grounded. This fleet will not be able to go anywhere, and it is a sitting duck. If the enemy attacks, they can't defend themselves and will lose everything. That's why you always want to pull back your damaged fleets to a safe spot, repair them, and make sure you have a front line that is refreshed and ready to protect them until they're ready to join the fight. Now, with that said, I'm pretty sure the AI is not going to be making any pushes against me, so I feel reasonably safe repairing our fleets immediately for the next two turns so I can sustain my next push. The early game is honestly a little bit of a race. You'll understand more about why in just a bit. For now, this seems like a decent place to stop. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Let everyone else have their chance. And we'll just kind of see if we're under attack. Hopefully not. War Clan, stay away from me. All right, we are fine. No problem. One more turn of repairs and all of our fleets are going to be ready to join the fray. Now, we're going to meet up with the other expeditionary fleets. We have the folks from the Daras Combine and we have a fleet from the United States, the first expeditionary fleet. These guys are going to be our allies in the beginning of the game, and they are going to help kind of direct our war effort to some degree. One of them's going to want to be more diplomatic, and, uh, well, the Americans are going to want to be a bit more ruthless and attack. In this case, the Roar clan is kind of weak, and if we can go ahead and take all of their territory from them very early on, we'll be in a decent economic position. So I agree with the Americans here. We want to be as aggressive as possible. And by choosing to agree with them, we will build relations with their faction, but lose it with the Daris Combine. Now, we could choose not to attack anyone this turn, and it honestly might not be the worst idea. That said, I can throw three fully repaired fleets into the enemy over here, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to win. So let's go ahead and launch all of these guys over here, as much overwhelming force as possible. 193 versus 72, plus 22 static defenses. 
I'm going to try not to spend any resources here because I should be able to win without much help. And we're not going to make things worse from our reputation perspective. So let's begin the combat. Though I do want to launch a few missile strikes over here if possible. We're uncontested over here if we take out this uh, research station, which we did. So we should be okay. We're going to launch a few missiles over here. Try to make sure we do not lose this fight too badly. Victory is imminent over on this side. Let's keep launching more missiles. Try not to lose an entire segment of our fleet. Our artillery should be doing some pretty decent damage over here. Looks like they are coming to me instead, and we're going to do an absolute ton of damage. Okay. So at least one of these fleets kind of took a massive amount of damage, but uh, there you go. That's one more major choke point. Now, when you do find a big choke point system, what's not a bad idea is to click on the star system and upgrade a command beacon. This is going to be building a command station in some of your defense platforms, and it's going to get you a garrison fleet. Garrisons being free defenses if you have less than three fleets already in the star system. So that ain't going to be bad. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some more of these star systems because I need to spend some minerals to make more minerals. So some of these worlds might be good for us. Lots of minerals and rare earth over here. Very nice. However, a cold world. This thing is going to drain a lot of our energy. So that's a little bit risky for us. Still, with so many resources, I feel like this is probably worthwhile. So we're going to give this one a go and have to make up more power elsewhere so we don't run into the negative. Now, unsurprisingly, I put a lot of value in getting lots of mineral generation early on. If you're going to have lots of building materials, you'll be able to expand a ton for your fleet capabilities, for your repairs, for your more resource generation, etc. All very, very important. So I focus a lot on that in the early game. But try not to neglect things like research. We haven't gotten into science yet, but that is obviously very, very helpful. Anyway, this all seems reasonable. Let's go ahead and end the turn. And we're going to have a bunch of freshly repaired fleets ready to get back into the action. Now, outposts are not going to be enough for us in the long term. We are going to need some colonizable planets or anywhere we can build a settlement and really start building up the human population. The game right now says that the Bow World is the capital for the Roar Clan, and it does apparently have a habitable system. So we need to start pushing down in this direction. That is our next short-term goal. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here, and I'm going to jump into a world over here um, that is currently occupied by the enemy, and it is a hazardous barren. Simply entering into the system is going to cause a lot of hull damage for our fleets. And the longer we stay here, the worse it's going to be. But uh, if I do not, they're going to send some reinforcements over here, and they're going to entrench. And if they can do that, this place is going to be really costly to break through later. So I'm going to take my two fully readied fleets, and we're going to jump in here. And you can see we've already taken an absolute massive amount of damage. Like, this is just a truly atrocious position. We do not like hazardous barons. That said, this is our best opportunity to grab it. So, victory appears to be imminent in several different areas. I think we can burn through these guys pretty quickly. No need for any missiles. And they are going to run from us. Excellent. All right. So, what I could do now is chase them down even further, but the only fleet with any movement is kind of in a lot of pain. We could try to chase after them using these fleets, but they'll take a lot of damage going through the Hazardous Baron. So, that's probably not the wisest choice. I'm going to pull this fleet back over here. And we're going to repair some of these fleets because this is now a safe position. They should not be able to attack us. If they want to attack me over here, they'll take a load of damage. The problem is, by keeping my fleets in here, we're also going to be taking damage every turn. So I don't want to stay here any longer than I have to. Okay, still holding our position. Let's take a look at science, because this is a whole aspect of the game. Right now, we are finally generating something so we can afford to spend it. We have a tech tree, and there are a lot of different research options which are going to give us some additional upgrades for our fleets, for our economy, etc. Right now, we want to work on something called the Pegasus Habitation Protocol, which will allow us to place down civilian outposts to build up our population and get extra power, and also, eventually, settlements. And settlements is what we need when we get to a habitable planet like we're going to find in Bo, if I'm able to punch through the War Clan. The enemy's trying to hit me pretty hard over here. This is going to be annoying. Um, if they're going to be hitting me pretty hard, let's go ahead and have a nice tight formation. We might need to spend some resources, and we might even need to be willing to use some nukes in order to make sure we win this. In fact, I'm going to go for nukes and save some of my resources so I can get more economy and repairs later on. A little bit risky, but the AI is not afraid to attack you in this game. Which is obviously a little bit of a problem. Um, we're going to let them kind of build themselves up here. Forces evenly matched. Oh boy. Um, we're going to launch some missile salvos. And we're going to launch, let's say, a nuke over this direction. And we're going to try to just take out a huge chunk of their forces. And launch a nuke over here. And that takes it another chunk. Alright. And then we just launch more missile salvos. And we try to win this fight. It's looking a little tight. I think we're going to win this though. We're burning down their morale pretty well. 
And they're going to retreat. Okay. Yeah, they've been kind of relentless over here, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and launch some fully repaired fleets into this system over this direction. We can even bring these guys along since they can make two jumps, so we're fighting with as much overwhelming force as possible. That minimizes my casualties and thus minimizes my repairs. Oh yeah, absolutely wrecked. No problem at all. There we go. Okay, so they're retreating to bow. We could actually try to follow them right now. They don't have much more than a simple garrison fleet, and I've got at least another 100 fleet power available. We could go for it. We would not be very well defended if I do that, though. So, um, yeah, maybe we just hold off for one turn, and as long as they don't repair, we should still be able to get in here and take this next turn. Oh, however, um, we've been contacted by another species, the Taminin Imperial Representative. Yeah, there's, um, there's a giant star empire that now wants to say hi. Oh, they're big bird people. Oh, hi, big bird people. Okay, um, they want to know what the heck we're doing over here, and, uh, it's like, you know, I mean, like, I, I'm, I'm here with friendly and peaceful intentions. I didn't shoot first, okay? And they're like, oh, I don't know about that. This seems pretty aggressive, and it's like, look, it was not our fault, okay? We just wanted a place to settle, and like, okay, well... You should probably know that that's all our du jour land, but like, as long as you leave us be, eh, we'll leave you alone, at least for now. Well, you'll pardon me if I want to quickly conquer as much as possible before they have a chance to say, stop it. So let's get into bow. Now these guys have nowhere to retreat, so we should be able to just completely wipe them out, which is fantastic. Oh, we actually get a little pop-up event. This does happen periodically where you're gonna have some decisions from your advisors. Which can, you know, in this case, let's say, spend some minerals in population to make our people happy, or whatever. Oh, we also finished our research. Okay, so there's a lot of different things we could go for over here. Uh, increase the production of our shipyard so we build ships faster. That can lead to something called self-repair protocols, which is equipment we can attach to our fleet so they repair themselves if they don't move. Or we could go for extra energy and minerals. All of that could be very, very useful. Um... Also, additional equipment for our fleets, giving them extra damage or health. All of that could be nice. Radar systems, population growth. Yeah, there's a lot we can do. I'm going to start by working up toward mineral extraction. I actually could really use some additional energy production anyway, since uh, we're getting a little bit low, so the reactor attunements work. Self-repairs aren't bad, though. Now, you might be asking, what are you talking about as far as fleet equipment? Well, if you take a look at your fleets over here and expand this, we can actually attach a lot of different equipment onto our fleets to make them better at the cost of some minerals. So, for example, environmental shielding, our fleets take a lot less damage when going into hazards. Like, you know, these hazardous barons over here. That seems pretty helpful. Or we can make them do more damage and take less damage, etc, etc. Now, I do need to be careful, by the way, because I am starting to run low on resources and it's going to be hard to continue repairing my fleets if I don't have enough minerals. Um, one thing we could do that might help a little bit is to actually engage in diplomacy with some of the other human factions and say, hey, um, would you like to do some free trade so that we can get bonuses to our mineral and rare mineral earth extraction? That would, that would make sense. So hopefully that's going to help us a little bit. And we have an intelligence link so I can now see how the other human factions are doing. And you can see the direction they've started to go as far as building out their own forces. So humans are definitely hitting this galaxy like a plague. Oh, uh, okay. So the Taminid Empire wants to talk to me. Um, their Empress actually wants to talk to me, personally. Uh-huh. And, uh, she's apparently not very happy. She's like, you think you're invincible because you beat up a bunch of little guys. All right? Remember, we're the top dog here, and if we need to put you down, we absolutely will. And I'm trying to explain myself, but she's like, no, 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 no talkies. No talkies. You, you stop attacking, like, the Roar Clan now. Don't try to challenge us. It's like, I wasn't even planning on it, but okay. Um, if we fight these guys right now, we will almost certainly lose. That's, um, that's kind of a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, she declared war. Okay. Um, mm, okay. Yeah. Woo! We're in trouble. Chapter 2! <laughs> the fires of Anabah. So the war council's like, well, we're screwed. Okay, we're really not ready for this. Like, really not ready for this. Cool. We need to meet up with the other humans and try to devise a plan. Fortunately, we have one more trick up our sleeve. Earth has provided us with one final fleet. Maybe enough to win an Anaba. I'm not sure. What do you think, fellow admirals? Well, they've kind of got a plan. At Anaba, one of the Empire's main planets, they are mustering their forces, and the Empress is there herself, personally. If we were to, um, 
attack the Empress and kill her or capture her early, maybe we could cut the head off of the snake, so to speak. So what do these fleets look like from Earth? Oh, they're strong! These be some very strong fleets! Excellent! So how big is this enemy empire, by the way? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, um, hmm. Reign for a thousand years without uh, ever being defeated, huh? Oh wow, oh wow, this is David and Goliath, isn't it? All right, so I'm supposed to be fast and decisive. I've got a limited number of turns before the Temenin Vanguard is going to invade. And my super strong fleet is in position. So um, I think we go ahead and make our push directly toward Anabah. The fleets are in position. All right, now we launch waves against the enemy. This is supposed to represent a combined effort between all of the human factions. Yeah, all right, so um, I got quite a bit here over in Anabaw. Do we think that we can handle this with the current setup? I mean, I've got a pretty decent number of ships in position over here. Could unlock by any means necessary if we felt like that was a good idea. Don't have enough resources for any advanced plans, which is always a terrible position to be in. You like to have a few resources around just in case you need to tip the scales in your favor. Still, they're going for assault and hold, so they're gonna take lots of damage. I think I can go for a cautious advance and that would be fine. My question is, can we instead just maybe punch directly through like this? No, I think we want to engage them in all four locations. I should have enough ships. I feel like we have a good chance of winning. All right, let's give it a go, um, and I will preemptively go ahead and start launching a bunch of uh, missiles in a few different directions and try to win some of these fights. We might be able to win this, uh, or maybe we don't. I don't know. Oh, it's looking pretty good, actually. Wait. Wait, whoa, whoa. What's going on with Annabelle 1? Oh, no! Oh, that planet just went boom. Uh-oh, wait a minute, what? Whoa! At that moment, we thought we had won, that we had everything under control, but we had set off a chain reaction inside the planet. We tried to pull the landing force back. It was too late. A chain reaction within the planet, you say? Well, crud, that's not gonna do a lot for my reputation. So what the heck happened to the planet? Um, apparently it was shielded by the planet's core, and then we just straight out overwhelmed it until it blew up the planet. Oh, that's good. That, that's great. However, it looks like that does put the Empire in a bit of an internal struggle. There is no clear path of succession. Oh, goody! Massive civil war! Thus begins Chapter 3, The Taminin Campaign. I like the direction this is going. Oh, yeah, that's a fractured empire, all right. Perfect. Okay. So while they fight amongst themselves trying to seize the throne, this is humanity's opportunity to advance. So at this point, we could argue that the kitty gloves have been removed and we are out of the prologue of the game because now we kind of get turned loose in a galaxy where you can see things are fracturing and there's going to be a lot more diplomacy that has to be taking place. I mean, we can talk to some of our neighbors and stuff and get a sense of some of their military power, how many systems they own. We can start doing a bunch of trading packs with these people if we want to. We can declare our own separate wars. We can meet some new folks. It's going to be kind of interesting from here. Also, we have gained access to some spies for the first time, which should be unlocked once you get to a certain point within the story. So, for example, if I wanted to move over here... We can get some sense of what our neighbors are up to and how many systems they've got, what I might want to conquer in the future. That could all be kind of fun. Also, we haven't really even had to bother yet with things like governors. Let's pop back into Bow over here, where I had that one planet that was habitable. A desert world, but you know, we can still build up a nice settlement. If we want to upgrade this thing from a civilian outpost into a proper settlement, we need to get ourselves a governor. And you can hire leaders, just like we'll be able to hire admirals and stuff, or more operatives, and they have their own different traits, which can be pretty helpful. And simply by hiring that governor, now we have a whole bunch of extra building slots where I can build all this stuff, and you can get a sense of all the different buildings that are available to research at some point in the game. I mean, as long as we have enough power, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to get ourselves a fleet repair station, so it's a lot faster for us to get our uh, fleets back up and running. We could also get ourselves an intelligence bureau, so I'll be able to get additional operatives. We could uh, place down some strip mines and really start extracting this planet for all that it's worth. Yeah, lots of cool stuff that we can do. And, ooh, an orbital dry dock and stuff? Yeah, that sounds like something I want. I want to be able to build Tier 2 cruisers and frigates. Tier 2 ships are significantly better than the 
the tier 1 ships I've been working with so far. And that's why the settlements and stuff are so much better than the outposts. You can build a lot more and customize the crud out of these planets. Jumping forward a fair bit more, we have expanded our empire pretty significantly. Still got a long ways to go, of course, and it looks like we're getting dragged into more civil wars on the other side of the galaxy, so... <laughs> we're finding there's more and more conflict. It appears that humans' arrival in the Pegasus galaxy has caused, um, a bit of a kerfuffle. That is the best way I can describe it. And unfortunately, I'm only able to show you a piece of what this game really does have to offer. There's a lot more that's going on that I'm able to show you. Uh, simple examples might include, for example, being able to jump into some of these planetary systems and start building out asteroid harvesters and solar collectors and stuff like that. Uh, and I haven't figured out how to do this yet, but apparently there's a way to peacefully integrate nations into your empire diplomatically, or at least become their protectorate. That's pretty cool. Yeah, lots of different ways that you can play this game, lots of different factors you need to take into account. But again, I want to emphasize, one of the things I think is so interesting is that this is a story-driven game that is turn-based, right, in terms of time. There's always a sense of urgency as you're playing. You can't just sit back and wait for a good snowball and just crush the galaxy. You need to be always trying to make some sort of progress, and that's pretty unique in the grand strategy realm. So that is a taste of the Pegasus Expedition. Once again, I want to thank Fulcrum for the sponsorship for today's video. Of course, if you guys like what you saw as you watch this video, there is going to be a link in the description down below. And again, the game is 15% off during release. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.